Can the church say amen? amen. Uh, we truly give honor to the spirit of Christ, amen. To our redeemer, our deliverer, our healer. Amen. amen. Yes. I was in the doctor's office when he uh, showed the x-ray. And the spot was as large as a, mar a marble. You know the marbles you shoot? Well, let's put it this way. Le ladies, the pearls you wear around your neck. It was a good size, good size aneurysm. And the bottom line is the vein or the artery never broke. It was just sitting there. And I mean, it, it sat there for years years. See, what she don't know is her older sister told me about it. And I was oh my God, 32 years ago, 33 years ago, her older sister told me about it. So I was waiting for her to testify that she had it, but she never said anything to me about it. But her older sister told me. So I said to her sister Brenda, I said, well, I won't approach her with it. If she want to tell me, she'll tell me. And if I tell her, then she'll know someone told me. So, <laughs> you know, you got to be smart about these things. I'm not saying I'm smart. I say you got to be smart. Amen. Because you, you, you don't want to impose upon others' integrity. If they don't want to tell you, you can't push them to tell you. And they are not entitled to tell you. If they want to tell you, then so be it. But if they don't, you can't make them. And don't get mad with them if they don't want to tell you. Because it's, look at your neighbor, it's not any of your business. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, yes it is. Uh, how many of you, <laughs> how many, I don't need a show of hands, just nod your head. And, and the people around you won't know who nodded their head because they're all looking at me. Praise the Lord. Have you ever got a thrashing by the Lord for day in the morning? Well, I got mine this morning. And he gave me my thrashing. Look at your neighbor and say, because of you. Yeah, because of you. Because, you know, as, as, as a human, sympathy goes a long ways. But as a leader, you can't not have sympathy. And I've been working off sympathy. Turn to your neighbor again and say, no longer. Sympathy. Amen. Now, you see, the bottom line is you've been getting away with murder. Religious murder. Uh huh. It stops now. Because he reprimanded me. And, I, you know, I, I won't even reprimand me. Because I feel good about me. But when God get on your case, oh, my God. I, I, I just couldn't rest. I just, I couldn't. I, I think I, I went to sleep 6.15 and she came and said, you need to wake up. But she don't know I just said I went to sleep. <laughs> Jesus, Lord. Amen, Walls. So in the book of Hebrews, and I, I got to do this, and, and, and the thing is, uh, don't, don't look at me in a definitive way. Look at me as a person trying to save your life. Trying to save your life. Believe it or not, this, this, I'm in the book. Let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter number 13. He brooded, he brooded, he brooded. Verse number one. Start at verse number one. Hebrews 13. Did I say 13? 13 and one. 13 and one. All right. Well, we're going to read two verses of that because that's just not quite enough. And as a matter of fact, it should be more than that. But not according to my Bible, but anyway, we'll go according to your Bible. Let's go. All right. 
Verse number two. Be not what? All right. Wait a minute, there's some bad reading. Wait, wait. Do we have any teachers here? I know we got one, but there's some terrible reading here. Let's try this again. Let's go. Let's go. Be not forgetful. And How did they entertain them? Unaware. You may be seated. Unaware. So why would the Lord give you that certain passage of scripture? Because of the way we treat one another. And because we see each other every week instead of some every other week, we take it for granted that they're just human beings and they don't deserve the credit that an angel would receive from us. We would praise angels before we praise our brothers and sisters. Let me try it over here, because I ain't got nothing over there. I have to do this every week. We, <laughs> we, we would praise angels, and, and we would make a testimony second to none and, 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 and show people how great the angels are. See, what, what that is, we're giving them more credit than we're giving the people that we sit beside every week. And we ought not to. And the reason why we ought not to do that, because you don't know whether the angel is of God or the devil. Every angel that gives you a visitation doesn't mean that he is of God. But you, you, you know my brother and you know my sister. So the accolades that you give an angel, you should give them. Now you, you will make them feel better about their relationship with you because they see that there is an interest in their welfare because you're giving them what's due to them. So let's, let's put a title on this, okay? Here's the title. Social and Religious Duties Social. of a Saint. Social and yeah, and Religious Duties of a Saint. And because you are a saint, you do carry religious duties. As a matter of fact, uh, let me talk to Chris back there. Chris, put up James 1 and 26, I believe it is. James 1 and 26. You, you all got time? I hope you got time. All right. 1 and 26. Let's go to James 1 and 26. Okay. If, if any man among you seem to be religious. Okay, well, what are we talking about today? Social and religious duties of a saint. Okay, let's go. And bridleth not his tongue. Can't keep his mouth closed. What, what do you mean? Always causing a disturbance. But you don't reverence angels that way. You testify of them, and in some cases, people bow down and worship them. But angels are not to be worshipped. Neither are men to be worshipped. But to give them praise for what they're doing, that's your duty. You're obligated to do it. Don't tell them I can do it better than you. Thank God for them doing it in your, instead or in your stead. All right, so what they're doing, they're assisting you in your duties and obligations before God. Because regardless of whether you want to be on the praise team or not, if you can sing, you should be on it. Let me try that over here. If you can sing, you should be on that praise team. If you are a good usher, you should usher. And if you are a deacon, you should be on the deacon board and you should beat the pastor here. Let me try that back here. Okay? A amen. Come on, talk to me. God got on me for being so lenient with you. Come on, Bishop. Amen. So, well, so watch this. What did Israel do after the miracles that God had performed? They stopped obeying Moses and found other gods to worship. 
So what do we call that? It was defiant of Moses. When you are defiant of the word of God, that means you're saying, I'm going to do it my way. If God tell you to love your enemy, you say, I can't do that. You're in the spirit of defiant. Praise the Lord. And see, what, what you, what we, what we, I got to put myself in there. What we must acknowledge is that seed came from someone and it wasn't God. Let me help you. When Satan didn't enter the garden until the serpent gave him a body to enter the garden in, he couldn't go in. Because the garden was not created for angels. The garden was created for man and woman. And the serpents and every other animal that God brought into the garden, legally, they were there. And they should have been there. But Lucifer had to get consent from the serpent in order to get into the garden. And the reason why he wanted that from the serpent and the reason why the serpent gave it to him because both of them was in defiant of God. Well, how, how is it that the people are in defiant of God? Because they don't want to do what he say. When you don't want to do what God says, there is a remedy on the back end of your life before your life is ended on this earth. Praise the Lord. How do you think and why do you think these things come upon people that are in church? Did I say the world? Not yet. So when we are, when we are dealing with society, we know what happened to society because they are not living. They just exist. You can't live unless Christ is in your life. Christ in us is the hope of glory. For I am the light in the life of every man. If he's not in your life, you have no life. You just exist. And so when the spirit of defiant comes, you got to know that Lucifer is the one behind it. Because what he did to Eve, he said, listen, he said, now, if, if you go ahead and eat of this tree, you would know like God. And God told him don't eat. So he was what? In defiant of God. So now she's in defiant of God. So how did she get in defiant of God? Because she believed and she received and she accepted that seed. For the seed of anything is within itself. And when she accepted it, she passed it from generation to generation to generation. Why do you think you're in defiant of me when I tell you to do something? Because what I'm telling you, I'm teaching it out of the word of God. This stuff just didn't fall out of the sky and fell on a page and say, look, this is what I want you to teach. Book was written before you was ever given. Praise the Lord. So you see, you, I'm going to do things without Bishop. You shouldn't do nothing without me. Let your moderations known to your pastor, Bubba. Amen, Walls. Well, I'm going to go do this. And I'm going, did you ask the pastor, could you do it? I'm not talking about society. I'm talking about churchy. All right. Now, all right. All of us got religion. All of us got religion. Believe it or not. You say, I don't have religion. No, no, no. I have a relationship with God. But in your religion, you do have a duty. And if you don't have a duty, you don't have religion. Let me try that over here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All of us are obligated to work in the church. Every one of us. When you say, I'm not going to do it, guess what? You're in defiant. Whose seed are you carrying? Well, Bishop, you got any word for that? Yes, let's go back to Hebrews. Verse 3. Verse 3, Hebrews 13, 3. Remember them that are in bonds, all as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity, uh -huh. as being yourselves also in the body. Listen, it's in the body. Now you say, well, my body? No, the body of Christ. 
All it takes is one bad seed. I tell you what, get a bushel of apples and drop a rotten one in there. And just let it, you got it. Now fermentation take place with all of it. Now everybody is rotten and stinking. Praise the Lord. You say, well, how did I get like that? You know how you got like that? You're in defiant. I'm going to do it my way, not the way the bishops say do it. Well, who do you think I'm getting my directions from? Right. Amen. So when God tells me to tell you to do something and you say, I'm not going to do it, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Amen. See, you, it, it doesn't profit you to grieve me. Because when you grieve me, you're grieving the Holy Spirit in me. Now he can't give me what you need to make it the rest of the week. Amen, Walls. I don't need to tell Bishop. You need to tell Bishop. Yes, you do. You need to tell me. You say, but I don't want to come in there and bombard you like the rest of the people. Listen, nobody bombard me when they let me know exactly what they're about to do. That's bombarding or is that reverence? You see, when you say that's bombarding me, that means you have created your own Bible. I'm going to do it this way. But there is a way that seemeth right to a man. But the end thereof is death. In other words, you're negating what God told you to do and picking up what you want to do. Praise the Lord. You see, you see, some people think, well, you're just too forward and you're just too strict. No, I thought I was until God paid attention to me last night and I paid attention to him. So what are you saying, Bishop? And this is what I'm saying. I just told my wife, I said, you tell my granddaughter, if she can't come to this church on Sunday, tell her to find somewhere else to go. That's my granddaughter. I am her grandfather. Let me turn over here. Yeah, I'm talking about Dennis' daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, listen, ain't no shame in my game. I blast. And my microphone is bigger than my mouth. Praise the Lord. You're supposed to be here, not somewhere else. What is that called? Insubordinate. Why do you think the church can't grow? Turn to your neighbor and say, it's because of you. That's why I can't grow, because of you. Praise the Lord. You got your own doctrine. You got your own Bible. You don't listen to Moses. Praise the Lord. Amen. We want to work something that's not workable because you're not workable. What I mean, that love offering you was going to give me, don't worry about it. I'm big enough. No, don't worry about it. Don't worry about that love offering. I, I'm good. Don't worry. I'm good. Shana K, I'm good. I don't need that work. I don't need that love offering. You give me the love offering to shut my mouth. No, I'm good. Praise the Lord. You see, I, I, I got to do what I'm called to do. Do you know if I, if, if I refuse to render to you the truth, I am in jeopardy of losing my soul? Yeah. Amen. And, and the ones that are not in here teaching them, I, I want, when, you, when your husband get home, I want him to go on Facebook and listen to this message. That goes for all of them. The ones that are over there, tell them too. This goes for everybody, including your children. Praise the Lord. In this church, I am their spiritual father. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Can we roll it? Roll. Well, let's roll it. Marriage is honorable in all and mm -hmm. the bed undefiled. In other words, when you're married, go to bed. Let's go. But whoremongers and adulterers, uh -huh. God will judge. Stay out the bed. Let's go. Let your conversation be without uh -huh. covetousness. Uh-huh. Let it be without what? 
don't, don't cover the conversation. In other words, you, you, you're saying one thing, but you're undermining another thing. So what are you saying, huh? What am I saying? Hmm. I'm not being truthful. I'm covering the truth because I don't really want you to know what I'm saying. So this is the way I counsel people like that, subliminally. I don't talk directly to them, but I tell them about their mess while I'm talking. Hello. You can't do it any other way. And the ones that are in a rebellious, very, very rebellious mood, I talk to them rhetorically because there's no answer behind it. So you never draw a conclusion. Right. Praise the Lord. Read to me. And be content with such things as ye have. Uh -huh. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So look what God is saying. When, when you're trying to make things happen that ought not to happen, not saying it shouldn't happen, but you're trying to make it before it should happen. If, 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 if I see a girl in the street and she appeals to me, I don't grab her by the hand and say, let's get married. I wait. Momentarily, might be three years, one year, but it's going to be more than one month. I don't believe in love at first sight. The Bible says, if thy eyes deceive thee, uh -huh. pluck them out. So that tells you it's deception in what you're looking at. That's right. It is. Very much so. Am I, am, I, am I giving you anything that you need to know? Yes, Praise the Lord. Okay, can I, can I keep running this? All right, let's go. Let's go, little girl. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Mm -hmm. Who's and my helper? The Lord. I didn't do it according to my religion, or according to my feelings, it was the Lord that brought this thing forward and it cost me nothing, not even time. Because during the process of God doing it for me, I was enjoying life, not knowing how it was coming, but I knew God was gonna bring it. Praise the Lord. So I didn't lose focus on where I'm going. Neither did I stop doing what I was assigned by God to do. Because it makes me more than a conqueror when I know serenity is resting in me and there is no confusion whatsoever. I'm not worried about a nervous breakdown. The word of God conquered breakdowns. And it will constantly conquer a breakdown. If you are breaking down mentally, socially it's all right. Because some people you <laughs> socialize with, you don't have no business socializing with. More people need to be in here. Amen. So you, you get the group say, well, uh, I, I go to church virtually. Uh, well, what's wrong with that, Bishop? It's just you there. Where's your children? Your children in another room playing with a game and you're watching me virtually. You're getting the message and they're not. So if you feel that that's the way you should do it, you need to read Hebrews 10 and 25. For the forsaking none of the assembling of ourselves together as the man of some is. Amen, Walls. Amen. So how come I don't come to church? Now, forget about COVID. COVID is nothing but a flu now. You get flu shots. Let me try it over here. That's all it is because they got the remedy for it. Is that right? Now, I want you to remember the flu was pandemic too. All right? The Asiatic flu, the Hong Kong flu, and whoever jumped up and flown and all that stuff. It was pandemic too until they got what? Thank you. Praise the Lord. So now they got the remedy for COVID and you still, still telling me you got to sit up and watch it virtual. No, you don't. The devil is a liar. You don't want to be confronted with truth. You're in defiant of truth. Hallelujah. 
And when you raise up in the morning, you should thank God for another breath because you got another time to get here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I, I shouldn't have to tell leadership to be here before anybody. Should I? They should be, leadership should beat me here. You said, but that wasn't taught. Yes, it is. Leaders, do you read your Bible? So if you're in leadership, you are what? The husband man. So let the husband man be what? Oh, boy, see, the MEC know these scriptures, but they're just in defiant. Isn't that something? They're just in defiant. They know the scriptures. But, boy, they don't just want to work them. Amen. Praise the Lord. But let me ask you a question. What, 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 what if you needed the Lord and you needed him before 7 o'clock tonight and he showed up at 701? So, so if you want him to show up on time, what is your problem? Well, you helping me out. That's exactly what it is. Defiant. All right, let's go. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Why not? Next verse. Remember them which have the rule over you. Hush your mouth. Remember who? Them. Who's in this pulpit? God said, I want you to remember that man. See, you, you, you take him for a person just speaking the word over you, but what you don't understand is I'm giving him the word to speak over you. And because I know your heart, thank you, my brother. I thank you for that one clap. Because I know your heart and he doesn't, so what I do, I infiltrate through him under the power of the Holy Ghost to tell you exactly what to do. Because God the Father, he can do it, but he won't do it. How come? Because there's an order in heaven. Right. And if there's an order in heaven, it should be an order down here on this earth. Amen. Amen. In him, we live. Ooh. Well, look at him. I don't even have to. You know, ain't this something, bam? Why well, didn't know more scriptures than the pastor. My goodness. Praise the Lord. Listen, church. Listen, I, I know some of you can't come to church on Thursday night sometimes, but how come I don't see you? Not one. Not one. I would love to see you one, at least one Thursday out of a month. Come on. Let me know you're still alive. Well, why would you say that, Bishop? One sister died and her daughter came in and said, my mama is a member of your church. I said, Sierra, check the records. She checked the records six years ago. Can you still be a member six years after leaving and not telling me you left? So what happened with that bishop? Let me tell you exactly what happened. She wanted me to do a funeral. for a member's price. Because a person that's not a member, they pay the full price. I wouldn't dare put the full price on you when you're a member. All you need is just a little bit just to keep the lights on, the air condition going. That's it, that's all we want. That's all we need, to be honest with you. The church can't run off of, thank you very much. Come on, members, talk to me. Thank you very much. We'll not keep them lights on. Praise the Lord. Neither will it swing them doors open. Who's going to pay the mortgage if we don't pay it? That's right. Praise the Lord. But I was a member. She was a member six years ago. I said, you're right. She was. Whoa. You know, this, this, this job is not easy. Because in some cases, it becomes offensive. But when you tell the truth, the truth is offensive when you're not doing truth. It's supposed to be. Amen. So when, 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 when Jesus told Judas, said, the man that sat with me is the one who betrayed me, he jumped up and ran out. Mad. Well, what was he mad for? He already betrayed him. 
Well, you already your soul in my now. He mad. Wait, you done sold me out and you mad with me and you sold me out? Boy, don't get it twisted. Something's wrong with this. You sold a man out and you mad with him. Read for me, little girl. Who have spoken unto you the word of God. He's spoken what? The word of God. All right, that's truth. How many of you know that's truth? Go ahead. Whose faith follow, uh -huh. considering the end of their conversation. Well, what is the end of my conversation that you're going to do what I asked you to do? That's the end of it. That means that conversation shouldn't surface again. That should be it. You got the word, and I'm going to do it. If you say, I don't want to do it that way, I don't see it that way, you're in defiant of the word. Because what I teach you is what God teach me. And as long as I live, I will be teachable. I don't have it all, and I probably never will have it all, but what I get, I will constantly give it to you. Amen, Amen walls. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's go, honey. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. So now, if Jesus Christ didn't change, why should I? Someone is going to betray me. He who sopped with me will be the one. And after he dropped his fingers into that bowl, and Judas Sons was there too, what did he tell them? That which you have to do, do it quickly. See, when you do wrong, I pick up on a lot of your wrong. But I don't say anything to you. As of this day, it stops. I got to tell you. It's weighted on me when I don't tell you. Now I got to go home and roll in my bed. I got a queen size bed. I ain't got no business roll. If it was a single bed, I can understand. Why would I want to roll? My wife is there with me. I don't want to roll too far. You got, you got it, Dara. See? That, now that one, see, she was the only one who understood where I was going with that. Pray, thank you, daughter of God. Praise the Lord. Watch out, Stanford. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, talk to me. Let's go, little girl. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today. He and changed forever. not. He changed. You want me to change? I'm sorry, I can't change. No, no, no. See, and, and I was talking to a few guys. I'm not going to tell you who it was. See, what, what, what some people want is the spirit of the humanness. You, you, you all know what that is? Let me go back over here. It's an anointing over here. Let me come over here. I feel it. I feel it driving me and drawing me. Praise the Lord. See, what a humanist does, they are contrary to truth. They want to do it the way the human sees it to be done. In other words, I'm supposed to accept two women marrying. I'm supposed to accept two men marrying. I suppose to accept homosexuality as if God cannot cast them devils out. I said, see, the very things that they want me to accept, the Bible is totally against. Amen. Amen. See, now you go back and you look at our Constitution and look at it before they start changing things and adding things to the Constitution. It tells us that we have the freedom of religion. So what is the freedom of religion? to serve God on our terms. So why is it the humanists tell me, how do you think your religion is the way? Well, how do you think yours is the way? Well, I know mine is the way. Well, how do you know? Because of the things that occurred in my life that man couldn't fix. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But they was fixed by God. Hallelujah. So anytime a, a, a humanist come to you and want you to change, don't you dare change, not unless you are in the spirit of rebellion. That's the only thing you should change from. Amen? Because when you are like that, remember Korah with Moses? 
Corey told Moses, we're grown like you. We, we, talk, we, hear the God, we hear God just like you. Who you think you are, Moses? You put your, your well, I guess it was a robe, but to me it's a dress. You put your dress on the way we put your, you know, everybody dress up the same identical way. So Moses, I'm grown just like you. But, but, but Cora, 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 you don't hear from God like me. How come? How come, Moses? Because of what you're doing right now. I'm telling you, Cora, you don't hear from God because you're not humble, neither are you submissive, neither do you spend time in prayer, and you don't consecrate at all. Who are you hearing? So Cora said, we're going to do what we want to do. God said, Moses, step back. I got this. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we'll leave that one right there because I got somewhere else I want to go. Jonah, go to Nineveh. I ain't, I ain't going. Can, can I paraphrase the way they do it in Liberty City? The way they do it in Liberty City. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, don't you be? <laughs> oh, okay. Praise the Lord. Yeah, so Jonah going to get on his high horse and he said, no, 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 no. Nope. I don't like them people. Wrong race. Now read it. Humanists, when they pose a statement, they pose it not with conflict, with order, so you can be on their side. Absolutely. They would even take you to Outback Steakhouse just to get you on their side. A hundred dollar bill, a hundred dollar bill just to get you on their side. We don't have to do what Bishop say. I got another plan. Watch this. Well, see, your plan is not of God, even though you do have a plan. When God give me a plan, it's for the whole church. And the way he has shown me to bless you, I, I can just go to pointing out people and you don't know nothing about it because I've been here since the church been here. I'm not talking about the building, I'm talking about NBC here in Broward, I've been here. And I've seen people evolve socially, financially, spiritually, and mentally. Am I right, Susan? Jenny, Jenny? I, I leave them two names right there. But I've seen you evolve in how God has blessed you in that order. Praise the Lord. Isn't it an amazing dot? They did what I said when they first came here. What happened later? So once you got it, are you still doing what I asked you to do? When Israel got their blessings from God, they started serving idol worships. Do you remember the serpents that came into the camp and God told Moses, tell them to look up at the serpent and they'll be healed. I'm not looking up. Do you all, do you all remember this? They wouldn't look up because they was in defiant of what Moses was telling them. First of all, their disobedience brought the serpent in the camp. And God is trying to save them. And they are in defiance of the man of God. And the ones that didn't look up who was bitten by the serpent passed. They died. The ones who looked up was healed. Obedience is... <laughs> My brother, they know, they know the scriptures. I'm telling you, they know the scriptures. I be counseling them, they counseling me. <laughs> they know them. Praise the Lord. Let's go look up. And be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines. Okay, but what is he saying here? That would be doctrines that would appear to make you seem as if you're in a cult. You know what that's called? 
strange fire. That's what that's called. You know when you build a fire in your house, you know every place in that house that the fire covers, don't you? Now, let's, let's come back into this day. For those of you that have central air in your house, there are certain places are colder than others. Is that right? So when you don't want to sit in the coldness of the house, you find the warmest part of the house. You don't cut the air conditioner off. You find the warmest part of the house. So what are you saying? See, when you don't want to sit under the auspices of the Holy Spirit, you find something else to sit under. Because it's strange fire. See, the, the Holy Spirit shows you where you are located. He's not beating you up and trying to embarrass you. He's showing you that you're not going to make heaven if, heaven if you're not. You got it, righteous? What causes a man to be righteous? Obedience. When a man refuses to obey, righteousness is not a part of his spiritual makeup. So that seed again from the devil, the seed of defiant, is now is in you. And you telling God what you're going to do. Oh, do you know God is remodeling hell? Y'all know hell is being remodeled. Y'all all right? Let me help you out with that. Well, how could hell be remodeled? Let me tell you how hell is remodeled. The Bible said it enlarges itself. So, so hell is under remodeling. So why does it remodel itself? Because more people are going than what we thought were going. Preachers don't want to preach hell no more. You better let the people know they're going to hell if they don't do what God say. You're going to hell. Amen. Amen. You in the whole campfire with you if you don't straighten up. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, I don't know why preachers are afraid to preach to their parishioners if they're not right. Preach to them and let them know that you're not right. Get right, Bubba. Amen. The blessings of God is upon you, but he will bless you even more if you do what he tells you to do. Why would you look for someone to follow when you got someone to follow? Praise the Lord. And all these, all, all of them was kids when I came here, except for Monique. She was, she was a little bit over a teenager. But, but Rex's children? Kids. Your children. Kids. Brandon and the rest of them, the kid, Jennifer children, was kids. And then I look around, where are they? Well, what's the problem? You know, why, are you, why are you looking around for them, Bishop? because they was trained under the auspices of MEC Ministries. What are they? Well, let me tell you where they are, because you don't put a demand on them. You let them do what they want to do. Do you not know that God is holding you responsible for your children Let me turn this corner. Because that got really quiet there, man. I, Jesus, Lord. Oh, my God. I can't, make, I can't make my children come to church. They grown. Do they stay with you? Yeah, but it ain't grown. Grown man, grown woman got their own house. Amen. Got their own car, eat their own food, got their own job. If you stay with your mama, you're not grown. You can be 80 years old, an old man, but you ain't grown. But your old self. Eating somebody else's food and laying in their bed and covering up in their blankets, talking, I'm grown. No, you ain't grown. You little stinker, you. Boy, my time, Brent, my time running out, man. Good. 
You think about what I'm telling you. I never forget my own, now listen. My daddy, my dad, he's got, he got saved when he was about 45, about 45, somewhere up in there. But before that, excuse my vernacular, I don't mean no harm, my dad was a hell raiser. <laughs> I'm just telling the truth. And when he got saved, he calmed down. But, but even in the state that he was in, all of his children lined up behind mama and went to church. All of them. My sister escaped, she married early. <laughs> but the rest of us, <laughs> I told you before, my old man's hands were so big, he'll slap your whole head. <laughs> Just wrap it around your head and you get out of that house and you go into church. That's the way he was, see? Listen, and I don't know how you feel about it, but I thank God that I was raised a Christian. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't get any better than this. Even when you alter and falter, God give you a chance to repent and make it up. That's the Christian way. Praise the Lord. He's a God of another, not a second chance, of another chance. Because many of us have had second chances. And if that was the case, we wouldn't be here today. Hallelujah. 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 And when, when, listen, when I tell you to do a thing, I'm telling you from my heart. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to keep you out of the pits of hell. I don't want to go to hell, and I'm not going to let you te take me to hell. That's why I'm telling you what you are doing is insubordination. Amen. Amen. I got a good, boy, time is winding up. I tell you what, this, this, I'm time, I'm very time conscious. Move to verse number 14 and we'll stop at 17. For here have we no continuing city. We have what? No continuing city. So why are you trying to build a mansion here in an empire? When you're leaving. You're leaving here. And so, if it take you being defiant to build it, then you need to stop building it. Praise the Lord. When you are moving in religiosity, which is religious, you should let me know what you're doing. Because in some cases, you get yourself in trouble with juju, black magic, witchcraft, and people giving you little trinkets and you don't know what they are. You placing them in your house and then things begin to fall off the wall. Because you don't know. Well, 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 how is it I don't know? Because you're being naive. Every gift is not a gift. Uh, what, what, what would it look like if, Britt, if we, we don't get along and I'm bringing you a gift? You better check that gift. You, you, you won't even hug my neck in church and you bringing me a gift. You better take that gift and flip it under and see what's on the back side of that gift. Amen. How many of you remember Sister Childs? She was our what? Missionary in Haiti, right? And a good one she was. She went to Haiti and she brought some trinkets back. She said, the people in Haiti gave you this, Bishop. I guess I was naive too. I took them and I put them on my shelf in my office. And ever since it soaks, I put them trinkets up there, things, was, you know, we were in Lotta Hill. Things was just going bad. And I'm going, well, what in the world going on here? And so 
what I didn't do is what I should have done. I should have consulted God before I received them. Okay? I should have. So I placed them on the shelf behind me. And those of you that was in Lauder Hill remember, I was seated this way. And I had, yeah, behind me. And so I placed them up there. And one day I was sitting in my chair. And I was talking with God. And he said this to me. He said, look behind you. And I look, all kind of faces carved out of clay and everything. He said, get them out. They didn't mean no harm. You know why? Because some people think witchcraft and black magic is God. But it's the God of this world, not the God of the universe. So I took them down to my shop on 95th Street threw them in a barrel, 55 gallon barrel, poured diesel fuel on top of them, and took a match and threw the match in there. Now watch this now. Threw the match in there and it was, Stokes, it was a blaze. I mean, it was burning, 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 burning. So I went back in about three or four hours and looked in there and they didn't burn up. They, that, that, that taught me a lesson. They didn't burn up. So I did a revival in North Carolina and I looked, by, uh, the pastor said, here's my office. I went to his office, I looked behind his desk, I seen some trickers. And when I went out in the sanctuary to preach, it showed itself in the sanctuary in North Carolina. And so those of you that people are calling to preach, you better know who you're going to preach for. Be careful for nothing. But in all things give thanks. Oh, you didn't know that one, huh? Ah, finally got one you didn't study, right? Praise God. Amen. Uh -huh. We got them, Doc. We got them. Praise the Lord. Maybe I can draw another one out before the message is over. Boy, they sure didn't know that one. All right, look, I got to get to 17. Let's go. I got to get there. And by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise. To sacrifice God. of what? Sacrifice of praise. Say it again. Sacrifice of what? Praise. So you say, I don't feel good. I don't feel like it. Guess what? It's a sacrifice. Guess what you should do? Praise. Oh, you got that one right. Praise the Lord. Regardless of how I feel, I owe him a praise. I got breath in my body. I got life in my body. I owe him a praise. Come on, let's go. To God continually, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. That's your tongue. Open your mouth and say something. There you go. Amen. Let's go. But to do good and communicate, forget not, for which such sacrifice God is well pleased. So communicate. How do I communicate with God? I talk with him. Now listen, you don't, you don't have to speak with God verbally. How many of you know you can meditate? How do you know, okay, this is how I know. When my heart is talking for me and my lips haven't moved. But Paul said, move your lips because it becomes a sacrifice. You don't feel like doing it, do it anyway. Promotion doesn't come from the east, the south, nor the west, but it comes from God. Why didn't they say the north? Because you should know heaven is north. Let me say that again. You should know heaven is north. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's go. Obey them that have rule over you. Do what? Obey. Well, we back there again. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go. And submit yourself. Uh huh. For they watch for your souls as they must give account that they may do it with joy. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Submit yourself. But they watch over your soul. If you grieve me, uh -oh. do you think you're on my mind when I pray? I got to get you out of my mind because you've grieved me. Because I might say the wrong thing while I'm praying. So I got to release you, but you don't get my prayer. 
How is that, Bishop? Because God hears the under shepherd before he hears the sheep. You don't believe that, huh? Well, let me help you out with that. David's father didn't like him. He was crazy about them other big boys, but he didn't care about David. He had him out there with those smelly sheep. So when David ran up to Goliath and saw how big he was, he didn't say, I'm running from you. He said, you uncircumcised. Philistine. I'm going to feed your carcass to the fowls of the air. Elijah said, who is this wimp talking to? So David has something to do. And see, we might not reverence it today, but I'm going to give you a peek in on Revelations. How many stones did he pick up? Uh-uh, five. Five. It's okay, he had three, but he picked up five. All right? Some people say three, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Incorrect. He picked up five. Well, what was the five? Let me show you. The apostle. The prophet. The evangelist. The pastor. The teacher. He picked up five smooth stones, which is called the five-fold ministry. He picked it up before we ever knew it. So what are you saying? When a church is without an apostle, when the church is without a prophet, when the church is without an evangelist, when the church is without a teacher, without a pastor, it's only a mission. It's not a full-fledged church as of yet. So what are you saying, Bishop? God wants to build that. And if we are in defiant of the person that God placed over them, it'll never come into fruition. Together we stand. So how many I got that want to stand with me? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Give yourselves a hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you.